yeah, we're so happy to chat with you because it's a it's a busy time. It's a busy time yeah, for, holy for soccer globally. Uh, let's let's start with with the big big event happening right now. The Men's World Cup is happening right now. Uh, United States are in a group with Iran, England, and Wales. Uh, I'm sure your days are filled with plenty of hours watching uh, the biggest tournament in the world. Uh, let's 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 have fun right at the top of this. We we usually do predictions when we do like game day type of inter or uh, game day type of episodes. Uh, yeah. Do you have a prediction for the oh, USA, USA winning it all? Let's go! <laughs> Come on. That's Sandra. what we like to hear. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> I mean, it's a young, feisty group. They're going I actually, all the way. I like this. I like, I know the US team hasn't been playing that well as of late, but really, like, given it's a November start, I feel like everyone's in this weird funk. It's such a weird start time. So I don't think any national team, when you look at these past windows where you were like, oh, they were amazing. So I'm not uh, as worried as a lot of US fans are with their youth. I think it's fantastic. I think you go into this like, what? We have nothing to lose. Let's go. And good energy. And this U.S. team seems to have a ton of good chemistry too. Like they enjoy each other. They 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 seem very much on the same page. They're having fun. I love all of that. All of those are such good signs. I'm like, yes, yes. Let me keep reading this. Yes, I, I mean, I like it. I like the prediction for U.S. to go all the way because it's been a little bit since they've been in this position, and the energy is just different in a World Cup. And being in November, it's it's odd. But because the Men's World Cup is happening now in November, it also means that the 2023 Women's World Cup is just eight months away, I which know, is just crazy incredibly yeah. nuts incredibly nuts the draw happened the yeah. u.s women are in a group with netherlands vietnam and then one of of three other choices portugal cameroon thailand julie when you saw the group you saw the draw for the u.s women's team for the uh world cup what were your initial reactions especially the netherlands in this group right this is uh yeah. well we didn't get sweden or, or nigeria i was like what is going on <laughs> how is this possible <laughs> um I, I think um, I, I actually like it. I mean, I, I, obviously the Netherlands, we have, you know, this short term history with obviously mm. with, you know, last World Cup, last Olympics. Um, but the fact that they don't have to travel, as we know, you know, you have what well, Canada, poor Canada. I mean, they got <laughs> they get, they oh. fall out of that top six. So they got taken out of pot one. And then now they've got to go, you know, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast, back to Perth, back to the East Coast. I mean, it's a. It, it's a lot of traveling for them versus the United States in that group. They stay their first three games in New Zealand. I mean, it's a very winnable group. Um, I think with the expanded field of 32 teams, you see that, um, that, you know, you have a pretty clear delineation of those top two teams in the groups, but um, I think it's a good group. I think it's a good matchup. And on the other side of the bracket that you don't have to worry about until the final, I think is what Germany, France, uh, Brazil. There was like five of the top nine teams. I think we're on the other side. So I like it. I wanted to, I want to follow up on that. Cause I, I, the thing about the draws, it's, it's always exciting, right? It sort of feels like it hits the reset button for those world cup preparations because you, you're, you're playing international window. If friendlies after friendly, after friendly, but once that draw gets settled in, it's like it hits a little bit of a reset button, doesn't it? And you're like, okay, yes, this, the preparation oh, yeah. starts now. But with this group, there's still like a fourth team lingering. Yeah, it could be weird. a Cameroon. Yeah. It could it could be a Portugal. Portugal. It could be a Thailand. Yeah. What's, what is that like when you sort of want to hit that reset button and say, let's go, but you still actually kind of have to wait a couple months to get the, the full picture of that group? Yeah. Um, I think... I think the what the draw does, it's less about who you play. We've always been of the mindset, like, who cares? We're going to win this friggin' thing. And it doesn't matter who we match up when, like, let's just go in a game, game by game, never take, you know, take a team for granted and, um, and expect to be on top of the podium. I mean, that's always been the mindset of this U.S. team. So it's not so much that they don't know. I think it's just good that you're finally like, okay, the draw happened. This is for real. And because what that signals obviously to the staff, to the coaches, to the players is we've, we've got to pay attention to the little things now, like everyone's doing the big things. Now it's all about the details and getting that cohesion, getting that chemistry, getting that confidence. Um, 
not going on a four game losing streak. Thank God. Uh, things like that. So, uh, you know, that, I think that's the thing. I mean, obviously they know that they've got to wait till February for that last group group, but I think it's just that you're locked in on, okay, let's go. It's time. You, you mentioned it where we wanted to ask you about that too. You know, the, the U S closed out their calendar year, with a handful of of really uh, good games, right? They went to Europe to go face England and Spain. They closed out with a, a couple of friendlies against Germany. But within that, there was a little bit of a skid before they said enough of that and closed out the year with that 2-1 win over Germany. Uh, you were on the call for for one of those games. What's What's the biggest thing for this team coming out of that window, that stretch of games as they look ahead to a World Cup year? Yeah. Well, no one wants to be the team. I wrote about this for ESPN. No one wants to be the team that had a four game stretch, right? That, and you could, you could really sense there was some stress within the group talking to Vlatko the night before, as we always do um, with the broadcast group and, you know, all the stuff he gives us on background, it was like, okay, you know, we're looking at this. And I said, any extra pressure? And he's like, I, this this job is pressure from day one it's been pressure so not really but obviously no one wanted to be that team um the thing that you know I, I was in less of a panic mode than I think most of the U.S. fans um but the thing that I I'm probably most worried about is just how they've been playing right it's it's one thing we haven't the U.S. hasn't played uh Jen Cooper was always sending me stats bless her um you know was, you know, texting me before the game and saying, you know, the U S has never done four back to back to back to back games against top 10 teams that haven't been at home in terms of friendlies. Like usually you have that stretch, but they're, she believes cup or they're part of a friendly at home and they're all at home. And so, you know, for us, which means, you know, obviously losing those three games, you you don't want to ever see, but like, because they had to play them away and um, they hadn't done that in a long time is why that had never happened. So the thing that's more concerning to me is the fact that like, we're not holding the ball. We're not playing with, you know, the swagger. I think we can with as many creative players as we have. We're not dictating the pace of the game. We're not pressing as much as I think too. And as we, as we should. And the other thing is, it's like most of the goals for the U S come off uh, a mistake. It comes off uh, Sophia or Mal just using their pace to get in behind. It's not like, Oh, let's connect eight, nine, 10 passes. And then it opens up the seam and then we're in, there's no run of play fluid, uh, gorgeous goals like that. And not to say that you don't want to score in these transitional moments, but that can't be the only thing. And I think that's the most concerning thing because that this team is creative as we know, and you have a ton of good players. Why, why even against top 10 teams, are we not holding the ball, ball more? Right. I, I think, I mean, you said so much of it correctly and the mentality, and that's been talked about at this point as as you look at this team and if you could talk to them individually, right. Or say one thing to them, like, Hey, this is, this is what you should be thinking about. Like where should their mindset be? What would you tell them, Julie? Slow it down. <laughs> Everything's a hundred miles per hour. Like, Hey, you don't have to every transitional moment get in behind, like slow the game down and then speed it up, slow it down. You know how you see so often, it's just like bounce it off a player, get it back, bounce it off a player, get it back. Our lines are so spread out that you can't bounce it off a player and get it back because you're 30 yards between our lines. It's like, just slow it down a little bit, control the, the tempo a little bit more. And I love that we're, you know, very eager and it's hundred miles per hour, but it reminds me of Heo in her early days with the national team. I was like, sister, breathe, just take a breath. Oh my God. She was like, like a little puppy, just running, 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 running. I'm like, slow down. Stop. I love um, that. I mean, yeah. And that's how I feel they are right now. They're very earnest in, and that's in our DNA. I get it. We want to run and gun, but we also have the ability with this group to play. Let's play. We can play against the best teams in the world. We should be able to play. 